This is Dan, and this is the Napkin Academy. Today's lesson is going to be a really fun one for me, because today what we're going to be talking about is literally talking with pictures. My absolute favorite thing to do in pretty much the whole world. The simple idea that I'd like to share with you this morning is this. Our brains love pictures more then they love words, something that's going to come in very handy for us as we start to become extraordinary presenters. We want to be extraordinary presenters, and we all know what that means. Most presentations lie pretty flat. They go from us to our audience, and not a whole lot happens. We're not going to do that anymore. From now on, what we want to do is we want to make extraordinary presentations, ones where our audience is as excited about a topic as we are, and we know that what we're really going to do in order to make that happen is change people. We're going to change our audience during the time we give our presentation, and that's what's going to make it extraordinary. Well, how are we going to change people by giving a presentation? What, what makes a presentation really extraordinary? Well, we know there are three rules, and we've spent the last many sessions going through the first two of them. Let's review the three rules of show and tell. Rule number one, tell the truth. Lead with the truth, and the heart will follow. Rule number two, tell it with a story. Lead with a story, and understanding will follow. So what's this rule number three? Well, that's the one we're going to talk about today. But before we get there, let's review those first two one more time. The truth. You know what? It's not one truth, is it? It's actually the truths. We talked about this. There are really three truths that exist for all of us. There is the truth of data, the things that the facts say. Then there is the truth of our head, the things that we think. And then there is the truth of our heart, the things that we believe, often in conflict to the data and often in conflict to the things that we know. And this puts us as presenters in a very interesting position because we want to ask ourselves, well, which truth are we going to tell? We're always going to tell the truth, but it, will it be the truth of the head, the truth of the heart, or the truth of the data? Well, here's something to think about. If our goal in making a presentation is to help people change, we do need to recognize that these truths are not all equal. It becomes increasingly hard to get people to change the truths inside them as we move up this pyramid, if we present some new facts and data, we will change people's understanding of the truth from a factual perspective. If we give people some truths that help them think about new ideas, we can help them change what's in their head. Here's the hard one. If we want to change people what they believe, what's in their heart, we're going to have to work very hard because that's the di most difficult thing to change, but that is the change that lasts the longest. The stories now. Old school review for all of us that are on the phone. We've been down this path now several times. We know that there are four basic stories. The report that kind of lies there flat delivers a little bit of information. The explanation that takes us up a set of stairs takes increases our ability step by step. The pitch where we started out with our audience in one particular place. We said we've got a common problem and we're going to jump right over it together. Let's change our actions to do that and of course the drama that said we're starting here today and together oh my gosh we fall into the pit of despair but we are going to work we're going to work really really hard we're not going to let this eat us we're going to jump back and we are going to increase our happiness ability and understanding at the end of this far beyond wherever we were before those are the four stories we've talked about those a lot and if you want a refresher please go back and watch some of the previous lessons but there's one more thing we can do as we tell the truth and we tell it with our story isn't there we want to keep it really crisp. We want to stay frosty. How do we do that? We say less and we show more. Rule number three. Tell the story with pictures. Lead with the eye and the mind will follow. If I show you something rather than tell you about it, the likelihood of your mind following me through the entire idea increases 
hundredfold. You don't need to take my word for it. One of the smartest people who ever lived, Albert Einstein. I rarely think in words at all. My visual images have to be translated laboriously into conventional verbal and mathematical terms. The power of pictures. The most financially successful author of all time, J.K. Rowling, tells us herself, when I started my stories, I didn't write outlines. I drew a map. It's the first thing I did. What kind of a map? J.K. Rowling's map of Hogwarts. She drew it herself before writing the stories. J.K. Rowling's drawing of the baby Harry Potter sitting on the Dursley's front doorstep, which she drew before she wrote the book. There's nothing new here. Leonardo da Vinci. Clearly the power of pictures as a tool to help think. Charles Darwin used pictures to help him think. Alexander Graham Bell, inventor, used pictures to help him think. Thomas Edison, inventor extraordinaire, pictures to help him think. One of my heroes, Donella Meadows, masterful thinker at Massachusetts Institute of Technology in the 1970s, invented systems thinking and the computer programs to go along with it by communicating in pictures. Steve Jobs, how did he manage to convince so many people at his company to do exactly what he wanted them to do? He drew. He drew on the whiteboard all the time. The power of pictures. Here's another quote. This is from one you probably don't know, this gentleman. But this is the man, and here is the quote. If any of you are ever going to make a presentation about the power of the visual mind, here is the quote that you will want to remember. It comes from Dr. Leo Chalupa. Leo Chalupa is the Vice President for Research and Professor of Pharmacology and Physiology at George Washington University in Washington, D.C. Previously, he was Distinguished Professor of Ophthalmology and Neurobiology at the University of California, Davis, where he was also the Chairman of the Department of Neurobiology. This is the guy who literally wrote the book on the vision sciences. He is the guy. And here's what Dr. Chalupa has to say. More of the brain is devoted to vision and visual processing than any other known function, including language. More neurons in the human brain are involved in vision than is the case of all other sensory modalities combined. Thank you, Dr. Tulupa. What are you really telling us? I'm telling you more of our brain is dedicated to processing vision than any other thing that we do. If this was a schematic diagram of our brain, everything that we see here in red has to do with processing vision. Yes, we listen. Yes, we debate. Yes, we love. Yes, we fight. Yes, we flee. We taste. We talk. We smell. We remember. We remember a lot. We think again. We talk more. But what do we do more than that? We look and we see and we look and we see and we see and we look and we look and we see. By virtue of being humans, we are essentially walking, talking, vision processing machines. We get up in the morning and we walk outside and we are seeing the day around us and we're making a lot of decisions about that. And then we walk down the path and we may see a flower that we've never seen before or see a butterfly and we look at these things. And then we may be jarred by some particular shape or color or vision that we see that is, that is so magnetic to us that heck, we'll just completely walk into a hole in the ground. We're so captivated by what our eyes are showing us. Visual mind never sleeps. All of that brain that we've got dedicated to processing vision. Is it any wonder that when we're watching someone deliver the traditional presentation of a bunch of PowerPoints where they just talk us and walk us through it, no wonder our brain cannot stay active, focused on that for more than a few minutes. Because that visual mind, if it doesn't have anything interesting to look at, it's just going to make stuff up. If our eyes have nothing to look at, our mind will wander off. Then again, if we do have something interesting to look at, our mind can stay focused on that forever. Remember, lead with the eye and the mind will follow. Why? Well, how does vision work? Miraculous process, isn't it? There's this world outside of us that's composed of things and colors and lights and movement and meaning. 
And somehow those things make their way in through our eye into our brain where we know things. We see things and we deduce things and we learn things based simply on what we've seen. Here's the way it works. There's a visual signal out there. And when I talk about that, let's just say that we've got, I don't know, anything, a little bug. Let's just say we're going to have a little bug, maybe a little ladybug here. And we look at that thing. And what's going to happen? Our visual processing system is going to make three instant judgments about that thing that we're looking at. One of them is it's going to say, well, what is it that we're looking at? Well, it's a bug. Another one is going to count and say, how many things am I looking at? And it's going to give me a number. In this particular case, there's going to be one of them. And then another part of my visual system is going to say, and where is that thing? Well, it's about this far away from me. Those paths, which are the legitimate pathways of vision, are called the what pathway, the how much pathway, and literally the where pathway. And they take place in completely different parts of our brain. And then we stitch them together through something that's called the when pathway, which then leads us into something called the how pathway, which is where we begin to see cause and effect and how things relate to each other. And finally, after all of that, we get the thing that we're going to call cognition, understanding. We might call it the why pathway. Vision works by breaking the visual signal down into these six discrete work streams and adding them all up in the end to give us cognition. Okay, well that's interesting, but what does that mean for those of us who want to use visuals to help us be more persuasive? Well, what I'm going to share with you is my own theory that I'm going to call the 6 by 6 theory that says if it's true that we look at the world according to those six different ways of parsing visual information, it stands to reason that we ought to be able to draw the world by being able to draw only six simple pictures one that maps to exactly each visual pathway. We know these names. The portrait, which mapped to our what pathway. The chart, that mapped to our how much. The map, that mapped to where. The timeline, that mapped to when. The flow chart, that went to how. And finally, the visual equation, that is the summary of our knowledge, the why. If we can draw those six pictures, or find them, or take photographs of them or create them in charts and graphics, our presentations will become visual in a way that no one watching them can ever fall asleep. It's the 6 by 6 rule. You all know this. This is the core of everything that I've written. This is really the baseline where everything grows from. Quick summary again. All it means is that if we want to really captivate someone's mind in a presentation, all we need to know is how to create, find, steal, borrow, or draw six pictures. I think that's enough theory for the day. Let's go ahead and look at some pictures. We're going to do things a little bit differently now than I've ever done on any one of our Napkin Academy webinars in the past. I'm actually not going to talk very much. And we'll let the pictures do the talk. <laughs> pictures, how much our minds can understand, can 
conjure up can be encouraged to think about without any words whatsoever. Power of pictures. I'd like you to do a little bit. Great homework assignment this time. Here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to tell a picture story. Nothing elaborate. You don't need to put a lot of time into this, but I can guarantee this is something that's going to be a lot of fun. What I'd like you to do is find maybe on Google Images, the same way that I found most of the images I just shared with you, or go ahead and take photographs or find in your own photographs, or draw something. What we're looking for is three, four, five, up to ten pictures that tell a bit of a story without words. Put them in a slide deck. Hey, thank you all for another great lesson. This is Dan signing off from the Napkin Academy, but don't go away. Now on our new platform, you can still submit your homework Debbie, our community manager, is going to join you right now to show you exactly how to do that. And I really encourage you, do your homework. Okay, take it away, Debbie. See you soon. We hope you enjoyed this Napkin Academy classic video. We've made it easier than ever to share your homework. After you've completed your homework and have a JPEG or PNG file saved on your computer, come back to this course. Once you're back here, scroll to the bottom of the screen. And in the comments box, you can add a comment. I'm just going to call this one my homework. You can also add images by clicking on the insert edit image button here. In the source box, click on the file. In the images window, click on upload and then click on add files. This is going to take you to your computer where you can search for your images. I'm just going to search for mine in pictures. And I'm going to choose this image here. You can also add multiple images here. Click Upload. After the upload is complete, click Close. Then scroll down and you'll see that the last image is here and it's checked. This is the one we just uploaded. Click Insert. I suggest in the dimensions box you change the maximum to 1200 pixels and leave the constrained proportions box checked. You can also add an image description here if you'd like. Click OK. You'll see that your image has been added to your comment. And now the last step, the most important one, make sure that you click the green comment button here to upload your homework to the Napkin Academy. We hope to see your homework soon.